while we allow all the participants to patch through, uh, let me remind everyone that uh, as participants walk into this webinar, they're automatically placed on mute. People who will be able to uh, speak are the panelists and, and myself, the moderator. And, uh, and if you have any questions, please do submit them through the Q&A toolbox, uh, which is at the bottom of your uh, web screen. So, so please make sure you send us your questions. We will try our best to get to them during this webinar, and we will begin in about a minute, yeah? Uh, and I'm also a volunteer with the Alcan Economic Planning Board for the United States. I will serve as your moderator today. Uh, I would like to welcome all the participants on this webinar. Before I introduce our panelists, I would like to invite our EPB Chair for the Southeastern United States, Nazim Ali, to say a few words. Uh, Chairman Nazim. Thank you, Rahil. Yali uh, to all of our attendees on today's EPB webinar. Uh, my name is Nazim Ali and I serve as the Chairman for the Economic Planning Board for the Southeastern United States. I would like to welcome you all to the webinar planned by EPB, in which we will be discussing the path forward for the retail industry. COVID-19 has changed almost every aspect of our daily lives. 70% of our national economy is driven by consumption. And as customers stay at home, our retail businesses and the economy have faced a big challenges at all levels. These challenges have forced us all to think of new ways to change our business models. We need to think about how we can embrace best practices and technology to not only serve our customers and maintain our sales, but to do it while ensuring complete safety and security of our customers our employees and our businesses at all times. During uncertain and stressful times with high unemployment, these things matter even more. Secondly, as our Jamaat, both individuals and Jamaati owned businesses look for stability in this uncertain environment and pursue opportunities in the mid to long run. We need to be absolutely sure we maintain the highest ethical standards. Our Imam has repeatedly reminded us to be ethical and adopt best practices. And it is particularly important that we follow all rules as we conduct our daily business. When it comes to applying for the government loans or pricing our product, we need to always be ethical. Lastly, I will remind our business owners and professionals that we are one Jamaat and we all are in this together. We may be going through stressful and uncertain times, but we should have hope because we are not alone. Our Jamaati institutions and our volunteers are here to guide you and assist you at all times. 
the Economic Planning Board has done several webinars to bring information to the Jamaat, <coughs> and we will continue to find ways to provide you with accurate and relevant information. EPP has also created an Economic Resource Guide, which is available on the AICC website at smileychamber.org and has detailed and constantly updated information on programs and benefits available to the Jamaat at the national, state, and local levels. And we have expert volunteers, including accountants, organized and ready to help you as part of the EPB's economic response team. So if you have any questions or need help at any time, all you have to do is call us on the access helpline. The number will be shared with you on today's slides. In today's webinar, we are about to hear from two fellow smileys who have been involved in retail businesses, have overcome challenges during previous recessions, and, <clears throat> and have been very successful in their businesses. Before I leave, I would like to thank our panelists for being here today and for selflessly sharing their knowledge and practical ideas with the Jamaat. Thank you, everyone, and Yali Badat. Shukriya, Chairman Saab. Uh, thank you very much. मैं फिर से सबको रिमाइंड करता चलूं कि ईपीबी और हमारे जो तमाम इंस्टीट्यूशंस हैं इन्होंने बहुत सारे वॉलंटियर्स को ट्रेन किया हुआ है और ये सब वॉलंटियर्स तैयार हैं आप सब की मदद करने के लिए हमारी जमात की मदद करने के लिए तो अगर आपको कुछ भी जरूरत हो कुछ भी काम हो नसीहत की जरूरत हो आप सब बेझिझक एक्सेस लाइन पर कॉल कीजिए एक्सेस लाइन के वॉलंटियर्स तैयार हैं आपकी मदद करने के लिए एक्सेस का नंबर है 1844 Five five two 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 three seven. Again, it's one eight four four five five two 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 three seven. Thank you. Now, before we begin, uh, let's quickly go through some uh, housekeeping items. I would like to remind all the participants that this call today is being uh, recorded, and a link to the recording will be available for everyone to listen to in about twenty-four to forty-eight hours after the call. Uh, this recording and additional EPB resources. So, Chairman Saab ne abhi economic resource guide ke baare mein bataya. All these resources are available on the Smiley Chamber website. Or, uh, wahan ka jo website address hai, wo hai uh, smileychamber dot org. Uh, so, please go there, access these resources, make use of them. They're being updated, uh, you know, multiple times a week with real time information. So, please zarur istemal kijiye. आज जो हमारा वेबिनार है द फॉर्मेट इज बेसिकली अ मॉडरेटेड कॉन्वर्सेशन इट विल लास्ट अबाउट सिक्सटी मिनट एक घंटा करीबन चलेगा वी विल हैव आर स्पीकर्स टॉक अबाउट देयर एक्सपीरियंसेस हाउ दे सी द वर्ल्ड एंड एंड दे विल आल्सो दे यू नो ग्रेशियसली अग्री टू आंसर एनी क्वेश्चन दैट यू मे हैव सो इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन आई वुड लाइक टू इनकरेज All the participants to submit those questions to us through the Q and A box, which is at the bottom of your screen. Uh, so please submit them. Uh, as you can imagine, कभी कभी बहुत सारे सवाल होते हैं, and we cannot get to all of them in a short time. Uh, but we will try for sure, as much as we can, uh, to get through these questions for you. And the ones we cannot get through, uh, we will certainly make a note of them. So that in future webinars, may etc., we can respond to what your real questions are. Uh, इस वेबिनार में हम पहले विल स्पेंड द फर्स्ट फ्यू मिनट्स बेसिकली टॉकिंग अबाउट जनरली रिटेल में क्या हो रहा है व्हाट्स गोइंग ऑन इन द रिटेल इंडस्ट्री व्हाट इज इट मीन फॉर अस एक्सेट्रा एंड देन विल स्टार्ट काइंड ऑफ टॉकिंग अबाउट व्हाट इज द शॉर्ट टर्म व्यू व्हाट इज द स्लाइटली मिड टर्म व्यू एंड हाउ शुड पीपल इन डिफरेंट इंडस्ट्रीज रिस्पॉन्ड टू दैट पीपल इन द सी स्टोर बिजनेसेज इन द ज्वेलरी बिजनेसेज इन द सेल फोन स्टोर बिजनेसेज एक्सेट्रा how should we be able to you know look at these uh, this crisis and think of options and solutions for us hame karna kya chahiye and and thankfully for us the two speakers we have today uh, are really really experienced they are among uh, the more successful retailers we have in, in our jamaat and so we're lucky that they're sharing their personal ideas with us etc with that let me introduce our resources very quickly uh, our first speaker is amin maradia uh he is the managing partner of meaningful partners which is a private equity firm and before this amin was the ceo of sprouts farmers market uh he helped the company take the company public and led it through massive growth nationally 
Uh, Amin is an active investor and also serves on the advisory board for the National Alliance of Trade Associations, or NATA as we know it. Our second panelist is Farid Virani. Farid is the CEO and founder of Prime Communications, which is the largest privately held AT&T retailer in uh, North America. Uh, Prime started with a single outlet in 1999, and Farid has led it through uh, massive growth, uh, where the company now has uh, over 2,000 stores across 48 states plus Canada and Mexico. Uh, and this number may have changed, of course, but, but that tells you the scale. Uh, Farid is also an active operator and investor, and he's engaged as a volunteer and board member with several different organizations. Uh, Amin and Farid, thank you both very much for doing this today. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, with that, let's get started. Uh, I have a few questions that I'll tee it up with, even as we uh, wait for the audience to send us some questions. So, so let's start at the top. Let's talk about the state of retail. What does the current situation look like? Uh, I mean, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you think and what you see uh, has happened to the retail economy over the past four, six weeks? Sure. Uh, thank you, Rahul. You know, before I answer this question, I just want to let everybody know that what Farid and I will spend a lot of time today on is, is sharing our knowledge and experience for entrepreneurs to plan for the next 12 months. Uh, we'll also share at the end of this, uh, towards the end, look beyond 12 months a little bit, but we're not going to get into long-term planning today, but can certainly do that offline or in the future. So, um, you know, look, what's happening in retail today, we all know it's a result of the COVID-19 uh, as well as mandatory government shutdown. And a simple way in retail, I think about breaking up the retail sector into three buckets. One is retail businesses which are running. Uh, that means they're 100% or above. Second is retail businesses which are challenged, which is they're 50 to 75% in sales. And then retail businesses which are frozen, which means that they're either shut down completely or somewhere between zero and 50%. And to give a quick example, you know, the running businesses that we know all is, you know, chain grocery stores, the big grocery stores, the convenience channel, online and web businesses are running fairly well, um, as well as on the health side, the wellness and safety side, those businesses are doing extremely well, uh, are examples of things that are above 100%. Uh, things are b below, you know, that 50 to 75 percent mark. I call it the challenge businesses. Examples are fast food. We know gas volumes are down, as well as home good retailers are down, you know, in that, that challenged area. And then there's parts of the economy of the retail consumer which is frozen. Examples are travel, hospitality, housing, auto buying, fitness, malls, um, discretionary services such as salons. So. The best example I can give to bring this to life is if you pick up your December and January credit card statement and look at your spending compared to the last four weeks, you're going to find what's happening in the running, challenged, and frozen side of the business. And as we talk about the next two, three months in some of the sectors we operate in, I think uh, that the shift from um, running, challenged, and frozen will shift to running, improving, and thawing. And thawing, those that are frozen, aren't gonna be running overnight. They're gonna go through a thawing period and that's going to have an overall impact on the economy over the next six to 12 months. And we'll talk more about that today. Thanks, thanks, Amin. So Amin, can you talk a little bit about employment and unemployment and how that is affecting retail? Because the numbers are huge. Yeah, um, you're right, Rahul, the numbers are huge. Just quickly, um, I think it's super important for everybody to just simplify this and, and track this over, over time. Uh, is One is we have 165 million people in the workforce in America. It's a number that everybody should have memorized, right? Pre-COVID, we had 6 million unemployed. That's about 3.5% unemployment. In 2010, just as a comparison, we had 16 million unemployed, which was 10% at the peak in 2009 and 10. So it just gives you a rational, it went, you know, six was pre-COVID, 16 million was back in uh, the downturn back in 2009, 10. Today, as we sit here, uh, actually, as of a week ago, there were 22 million people unemployed in the US, which is 14%. And we're likely to see more peaking in the next two weeks. Uh, and that number is most likely going to go above 25 million in unemployment. 
So that's 15 plus percent unemployment. Good news is over the next couple of months as states open up, uh, we can expect that number to come downwards. And as we talk about our different businesses and impacts, think of it in a simple way that it's at 15 plus percent unemployment, it's gonna have to cross the 10% mark first, and then it's gonna continue, hopefully, inshallah, work its way below 10% over time. So we should, in everything we discussed today, we should have that at the back of our mind in thinking that we're gonna go from 16 to 10 down towards, inshallah, towards three and a half. We may not see three and a half for a long time, but we should be thinking in that mindset. Okay, thanks for sharing that. So, so Farid, let's switch over to you for a second, right? Uh, you have retail outlets now in almost all the 50 states across America. Uh, you heard Amin talk about his big picture. Sorry, my, my phone got dropped. So you're back. Okay, so Farid, uh, sorry about that. So Farid, Amin just talked about the big picture from his perspective, what he's seeing. You have retail stores across the U.S. in all, almost all the 50 states. Are you seeing the same thing, number one? And number two, are you seeing any regional differences? Because as you know, our Jamaat is clustered in Texas and, and, and uh, the Southeast and Florida. Are you seeing some differences in retail across these you know, clusters where our Jamaat is? Sure. Thank you, Rahil, and uh, thank you, EPB, for, for hosting this, this call. Uh, Rahil, before I, I answer your question, I'd like, I like for the Jamaat, the participants, to know that this is truly a difficult time. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a mushkil, mushkil, mushkil waqt hai. There is no doubt about it. Both the other anxiety hai, fear hai. And I'm sure there is a lot of stress also uh, within the Jamaati members, both uh, professionals and families, and especially the business people. So, so I mean, so many businesses are closed, as Amin said. I mean, a lot of people are impacted. Traffic is slow, absolutely, no doubt about that. But as a community, as, as the one Jamaat that we are, we should, we should remember this, that all of this will pass. And, and we're together, we are here to help each other, and, and we'll get through this. And we will together, together make what I would call a, an effort that will hopefully take us on the other side. And remember one key thing, how we react to this, how we react to this challenge, will define how we end up on the other side in three to six months or maybe a year. So it is very important in my opinion, my humble opinion, that the Jamaat uh, remember to help each other, ask for help. EPB and other institutions are here to help. So I wanted to, to make, make that request of the Jamaat uh, so that they, they remember that. So Ek Dusre has support or help will be key here. Okay. Uh, right to your question about regional differences. Yes, there, there certainly are what I call regional uh, differences as to how COVID has impacted. For us, as we look at our business, Northeast is impacted a lot more than, uh, than Texas, Southeast and, and, and the West. Uh, our stores are New York, Connecticut, New, New Jersey, are all closed and they've been closed for a while. And, and all the large cities have been impacted more. So large, dense cities are impacted more. Okay. So San Francisco is impacted more, but Bakersfield is not. Uh, so it's a very much a tale of two cities. Jitna bara bara shahar hai, wahan problems yada hai. Chote shahar, jahan pe community spread out, uh, in East Texas, West Texas, uh, the impact seems to be, be very, very, uh, very minor. Now, business is still impacted everywhere. People are scared and they are not shopping, but at least the stores are open uh, and, and they are able to, to conduct business. 
So talk specifically about Texas and the Southeast, Georgia, all of that. I think they are better, faring better than uh, the Northeast is, but, uh, but the impact certainly is there. Okay, so, so Farid, let me ask you this. Uh, if I'm a small business owner, if, you know, what are the next three months looking like for me? If, I have, if I'm in the Northeast, if I'm in these areas that are pretty much shut down, what am I doing in the next three months? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a very good question, Rahil, is because this is the time where, where you have hardly any tra First of all, if you're open, that's the bigger question. If you're operating in malls, uh, you know most of the malls are closed. And we have a lot of Jamaati members in, in jewelry business. We have people in phone business. And a lot of other businesses that operate inside an enclosed mall. That's, that's a real problem. Okay. Uh, and, and, and then, let's face it, if you're based in Northeast, you're impacted a lot more. If you're in a big city, a big office building, or a business park, you're imp impacted more because the lunch crowd isn't there and, uh, and all the other related activities are not there. So you're impacted for sure. Uh, what I would say is this, traffic is a challenge. And even as the economy opens up, Things will open, but it may take a little time, and some markets will open quicker than others. Now, if you are a small business operator, or if you are somebody that's uh, in a mall, I think what I would do is I would start looking at what can I do to improve my sales, manage my team, my people, and, and logically talk to my landlord and my vendors to see what support they can provide. This is not the time to be ashamed. This is not the time to be, oh, how do I go talk to a landlord? How do I talk to my banker? This is a classic opportunity for you to develop what I call a personal rapport with your landlord, with your banker. Speak to them, talk to them. They see the same thing you are seeing. They walk the same mall. They know there are no customers and they watch the same news. So, so the biggest thing, the most important thing that I would do is I would basically talk to my vendors, but also talk to my mortgage or mortgager, in this case, bank or whatever that may be, and talk to my landlords. Talk to them, engage with them, ask for concessions, ask for abatement, rent abatement, payment or mortgage deferrals, rent deferrals, renegotiate your entire rent. And if your lease is coming up, which happens in a lot of times, you've got leverage. Use that leverage to cut your cost. I would focus on my employees. This is the time when they are nervous, when they are anxious. Be transparent. Talk to them. Engage with them. If you have the opportunity, visit with them live. Share with them your anxieties. Ask about their children. Ask about how their online learning is going. This is the time where you can show leadership. Being a business owner is, is also means you have to show leadership. This is the time where you can show more of that leadership. And last but not least, be prudent. Look for excesses. Look for opportunities where you may not have looked. Review your insurance costs. Review your vendor contracts, your utilities, whatever. You've got time. Focus on those things. And at last, don't unreasonably worry about things. Focus. And again, Ryan, this is the key message that I like to leave the Jamaat with. Focus on what you can control. Focus on what you can control. Try not to worry about things that are beyond your control. Look, science will work and resolve the virus issue. Drug companies, scientists will work on that. Don't watch news all day long and worry about everything. Focus on what you can control. And that is not, that's a sound advice for everyone. And I remind myself and my team of this all the time, focus on what you can control. 
So, so uh, Farid, that is actually very good advice. And, and based, based on what I'm hearing you say, this applies to both store owners and retailers inside the mall as well as outside the mall, correct? Okay, so, so let me kind of use that. Uh, but Farid, before I move on, actually, I do have a question. Oftentimes, the uh, mall owners, the management company, are uh, very big companies, hai, right? So, if I have a small kiosk or a store in the mall, ke andar, right? how do I become comfortable going to this big company uh, to ask them, do I reduce my rent do? I mean, normally, they just throw you out of the office. Well, you know, it's a true thing. It's an uh, anxiety. Hoti hai. Mujhe bhi hoti thi. I've gone through this, but एक चीज दिमाग में रखनी है कि जो मॉल में काम करते हैं वो भी इंसान हैं वो भी they are just like you and me they have families they have responsibilities and बहुत सारे वो लोग का जॉब भी डेंजर में है तो वो लोग समझते हैं कि ये anxiety this is not Farid is trying to game the system and ask for a concession. This is a national emergency. Hai. Engage karna, sabse achha kaam hai. You can start with the mall guys. I understand they are big companies. But if you look at the news media, they are only getting 30%, less than 30% rents from their tenants. Bhale mera chota kiosk hai, chota store hai. But what do you think that Macy's, TJ Maxx, and H&M are giving rent? They are giving also rent. So, if you go and request it, then what is the difference? The worst thing they can say is no. And you're the exactly where you started. Yeah, 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 agreed. And, and what I'm saying is this. Most people, most Jamaati members, in my opinion, will surprise themselves if they just took both or a himmat karke ja ke baat kare and again hota hai both dafa kya hota hai ke a father is not comfortable well send your kid have them write an email and send it both dafa communication problem hota hai mai samajhta hu and sometimes it's okay to have somebody else write the email for me or somebody else represent you i'll give you an example a lot of mall guys we have a, a newly formed Jewelers Alliance that you may know about, the Jamaat may know about. I say we join that. Talk to them, see what they are doing. But there is no shame. And this is the time to be more aggressive and more, not aggressive, probably more, you have to be more assertive. Apna message has to be delivered. No, I appreciate you're saying that because but when you see that others are also doing it, it's actually very important. Thank you. And, and you know, you talked briefly about, uh, you know, try and find ways to increase your revenues. I'll come back to this in a minute. But before I do that, I mean, let me switch over to you. Uh, same question for you, but from the perspective of the C store space, Marapase uh, Hamna. एक या बेस स्टोर छे आई हूं स्टोर रन करू छु ओन करू छु नेक्स्ट बे थी त्रण महीना मा राइट मने शु करबो जो इन द इमीडिएट टर्म राइट टू बी एबल टू सर्वाइव एंड बी रेडी टू थ्राइव आफ्टर दैट नेक्स्ट बे थी त्रण महीना या यू नो व्हेन आई व्हेन आई टॉक अर्लियर अबाउट अम यू नो स्टोर्स दैट आर रनिंग अह गुड न्यूज इज एज वी ऑल नो मेनी ऑफ यू हु आर इन द सी स्टोर बिजनेस इज there's a few different dynamics that are going on and and I'm in the C store business. We have senior living centers. We're also in fast food, fast casual hotels. So I understand all these businesses and they're very different. Each one, every hour I'm having a different conversation. Um, but on the C store side, here's the facts and kind of what I see in the next three to four months is today the gas volumes are down significantly. When I talk to as part of NATA across the country, most gas volumes are down anywhere from 30 to 50%. Um, but people have been, because of what's happened with fuel, fuel prices, uh, margin has been good for the last six weeks, four to six weeks. Um, and that margin continues to be good and that will normalize. So as we look out, uh, just what we see happening over the next two, three months and then how to react to it, 
Uh, one is the gas is slowly for states as your state opens up, gas is going to slowly come back up, maybe do 70, 80 percent, not to 100 percent immediately. But then at the same time, the gas margins are going to flatten back to what they were pre-COVID over time, over the coming weeks, maybe if you're lucky over the next several months. The second piece is we know grocery has been up and grocery has been up for two or three reasons. The big pu push or positive in grocery has been a lot of the grocery large chains have, are closing at 7, 8 p.m. So we're seeing our evening business go up tremendously, as we all know. We're seeing these health safety items going through the roof. We're seeing uh, alcohol and tobacco going through the roof because people don't want to go. First of all, it's shifting from out of home into in-home consumption. There are no bars open. There are no restaurants open. We're seeing big, you know, big packets of chips move when that mom comes in and grabs every big bag she can, right? So those things are moving. So grocery, uh, fortunately, has been good. Um, and what I see over the next two, three months is um, you know, grocery for the second quarter, I think will continue to be good because grocery stores are not going to cut hours quickly. I think our morning business, as your state opens up, the morning business will start picking up again. So, you know, second quarter is good. The picture may not be as rosy in the back half of the year. We'll talk about that in a little while. So what can you do in the next two, three months? Uh, first of all, you already heard this if you attended the uh, webinar last week, so I won't go into details. The customer and employee health safety is super important. And what I'll add is it's all visual cue. It's a mindset. Remember, customer mindset, employee mindset of what they're reading, seeing, walking, talking. So everything's a visual cue at the pump, at the store entry, there's hand sanitizers, what you're putting where, how often you're cleaning your counters when customers leave. It's as much a mental game as a uh, physical uh, health safety issue from a consumer perspective, that's going to last through the summer. Keep laser focused on that element is super important. Second is, if your business has been fortunate, if your business has been fortunate, save that cash. Put it in the bank and isolate that because we may see the other side for grocery stores. Just isolate that cash and save the cash. This is not the time. Curry talked about this. If you're doing good, you know, it's hard to go to a landlord, but even if you're doing a little bit off, if your business is off, don't be aggressive with the landlord, but be assertive with the landlord and treat every cash just because your business is good doesn't mean you don't cut down the appropriate cost structure in the business to save for a rainy day. Uh, and then if you got a PPP loan, put that money aside. Think of that as extra credit because you may need it six, 12 months from now. And I'll get into that in a little while. And, the, you know, so cash, 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 hoard your cash. If you, you're the fortunate, remember, if you're in C-Source, you're in the top group. You're in the running group. We may find you in the slightly uh, slower income group, maybe at 80, 90 percent in six months. And so we plan for that. Uh, and then the third thing to start thinking about um, is as this unemployment keeps increasing and then comes down, but won't come down fast, crime safety and security is going to start becoming an issue of the summer. Make sure your cameras are working. Make sure your signs are up. Make sure you pull that old training manual for employee training and your pers personal training of what to do when a crime happens. Many of the TAs have put on this program and will be doing it over the summer, inshallah. Make sure you start thinking about the, the crime and safety and security of yourself and your employees also. So these are some of the things to talk about, th to think about for the next two, three months. And then we'll get more into what the back half and early 2021 could look like for the sea store industry in a little while. So, I mean, that's actually a very important point you raised. Ke, ke, uh, khas karke in these times when things are stressful, unemployment is high, the idea of safety and security of the business, of the employees and of the customers becomes even more important for survival, right? It's a very interesting take. So, so I mean, before we kind of move on to the next stage, you, you said something interesting. Uh, in yesterday's webinar, right, there was some conversation about how in this time, customers are only buying essential products. And, and the trick is, to, to make your product or service essential in the lives of your customers. Now, my personal background is in commodities, where they say the value of any product or service is whatever the market is willing to pay, right? 
सो ना फ्रॉम अ स्टोर स्टैंड पॉइंट अगर हमारा पास है बेसि स्टोर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी में रिटेल इंडस्ट्री और स्टोर ने शू राइट वॉट आर दी इसेंशियल प्रोडक्ट्स इसेंशियल छे शू और वेल्युएबल शू है फॉर माइ कस्टमर्स इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी हाँ तो बे तरह चीज से एक तो जो एल्कोहॉल एंड टबैको विल कंटिन्यू टू स्टे स्टे अप ऊपर रहते वन पीपल डोंट हैव अदर थिंग्स टू डू दे कंटिन्यू टू ड्रिंक इफ दे आर नॉट गोइंग टू द बार विद द फ्रेंड्स बिकॉज दे कैन अफोर्ड इट बार में नहीं जाता या तो रेस्टोरेंट में नहीं जाता केम पे पे ओछी थी गई है देर स्टिल यू नो एल्कोहॉल वन पीपल आर स्ट्रेस दे बाय मोर टबैको वी सीन वीव हर्ड द टबैको रिटेलर्स टबैको रिटेलर्स सॉरी मैन्युफेक्चर की बात थी तो ओके अमरु बिजनेस अप छे राइट नाउ एसेंशियल प्रोडक्ट्स इज बिग आइटम्स जे बिग आइटम्स वेचे छे अपने 12 पैक बाजार में वेचे वेचाई छे दुकान में तो ए आस्ते आस्ते ओवर द समर सिंगल पैक से जासे तो व्हाट योर इन्वेंटरी इन्वेंटरी में ध्यान रखवानी जरूरत छे मेक श्योर के तमारो इन्वेंटरी एकदम बाजारे नहीं थई जाए पण ओछी भी नहीं थई जाए अने आपरे जे मास्क छे सैनिटाइजर छे ये बड़ी आइटम तो रेस्ट ऑफ समर माटे बेचावानी चाहिए। डोज आइटम्स विल नॉट गो डाउन, आई बिलीव ओवर द नेक्स्ट थ्री, फोर, फाइव, सिक्स मंथ्स। आज व्हाट हैपेंड राइट नाउ इज सम ऑफ द बिग लाइक वॉलग्रीन, सीबीएस, टारगेट, इवन सम ऑफ द ग्रोसरी स्टोर्स, दे डोंट वांट टू सेल मास्क्स एंड दे डोंट वांट ट Go to that Chevron across the street. They have it. I've literally had that said to me, right? And they say that because the big companies don't want to be viewed today as taking the inventory from the hospitals, so they're not sometimes even carrying those items. But as as things normalize, your business will start normalizing. Uh, but I think focusing on the customer and making sure they understand that you still have those items and then you through the visual cues, I think that's how you continue to maintain the business over the summer. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Farid, we have a question for you from the audience, actually. Uh, so, so we have a couple of people who own a bunch of cell phone stores, up to a hundred cell phone store outlets in the malls. They have gone to the landlord uh, requesting, uh, you know, rent abatement, etc. And and the landlords have basically said, nope, not happening. What situation may kya karna chahiye? Should you resist? Should you push back now? This business has some monies; they have reserves, but obviously, this is not what they want to use up the reserves for. That's so, true. what are the recommendations that you would have for them? So, you know, yeah, this is not this is not exact science; it's an art. You have to negotiate. You may not get everything you want. You may not get abatement, but you may get a deferment. So, my meaning is, abatement is what is called forgiveness. माफ कर देना और डिफरमेंट का मतलब है कि डिले करना कि आप ये महीने कर रहे हैं तीन महीने बाद छह महीने बाद देने का या या टेन परसेंट देने का सो सो यू टॉकिंग अबाउट स्पेसिफिकली दैट स्टोर दैट यू टू दैट दैट क्वेश्चन राइट या इफ यू हैव दैट काइंड ऑफ स्केल दैट यू हैव हंड्रेड स्टोर्स देन इट्स you have leverage you have much more leverage because whether you are a jewelry store or a cell phone store in a mall per square feet basis you pay a lot more than a lot of other retailers do significantly more now the question is that trust me that mall that landlord does not want to lose you they don't want to lose you but what they don't want to do is work with you then they have no choice but to work with someone else because in today's environment everything comes out on social media so if he gives the landlord gives him a break he'll tell me and then I'll go ask for a break and then it's a vicious cycle it's a it's a negotiations that that will carry on for a long time chances of them evicting you putting you in default are very low what i would do is i would engage and if you want to call me offline i can walk you through some strategies that may be of value to you so uh, rahil you can share my number uh, with with this individual thanks it's very that's very generous of you thank you thanks for for helping with that 
One, uh, one more topic that people, I saw a couple of people ask about, you know, what can they do to increase sales, right? And, and I think uh, I think both Amin and I should, should talk about that. I think that's an important question. Let's talk about that. that. Let's talk about that. So, so what are your thoughts on that, Farid? So, uh, look, everyone knows digital is here to stay. And an event, a pandemic like this, will probably get more people to use the digital tools. Young people already are. And, but think about it, whether it's food service, everybody's used to Uber Eats and all of that stuff. You've got a lot of places, believe me or not, in our business, we are providing curbside delivery. So you go online and you literally buy a phone or whatever, and you don't even have to come inside. And you pull in and we'll do a curbside delivery. Imagine that. So it's called adapting, right? We don't have a choice. Digital is here to stay. I would focus, and I know it may sound, well, I'm a mall guy. I sell jewelry. How is that going to affect me? I cannot pivot this fast. And I would say, no, you can. There are a lot of places where you can try and you can try to evolve. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but at least it's an option. You have downtime. This is where you can engage yourself, get help, talk to the associations, talk to EPB. Maybe they can help. That is probably the most important thing that you have to focus on. And I cannot, I'll be, I want to make sure that I come back and apne employees ka khayal rakhna bohot zaruri hai. If you're going to come out of this and if your employees are not, if they are not with you and you're not leading them, I think you will miss out on that, miss out on the opportunity. So I would say focus on that. If you want to grow your business, focus on digital that includes a lot of things. Focus on your employees and focus on things that Amin talked about. Merchandising, POP, marketing, things like that. And make customers safe in your stores. Make sure you have the, uh, the hand sanitizer, the, the masks, or whatever that gloves that, that are needed. Because that's going to be, that's going to be with us for the next three to six months to focus on that. So those are some of the strategies that, that come to my mind. Okay, right, so right, let, me, let me jump in real quick here yeah. and, and just add on the strategies uh, on both sides, right? So we haven't talked a lot about fast food and fast casual restaurants. And many, if you're in a franchise system, uh, many franchisors have been good. And one of the businesses that we own, we've actually been pushing the franchisor saying, you have three days to approve this uh, family pack or it's going out. Like it's going out on our website and it's going out in our texts to our customers. And we've literally, you know, um, increased the sales almost uh, by 20% because we fit, we went from a $12 ticket to all of a sudden a $45 ticket for the family for the evening, right? So, um, and then fast food is different. Fast food, I think, will come back a little bit quicker. But if you're in the fast casual space, dine-in is not going to come back as quickly as curbside, as Farid said, and as uh, pickup. So I think we're in a new world of pickup and delivery. And a lot of customers, including from millennials, we might have argued we're used to it, but middle-aged people, older people, retired people, aged people have gotten used to technology. So we're going to see uh, a step change in technology use for this type of activity across businesses. And then it'll continue to grow. It's been growing from literally 3% 20 years ago, and de depending in apparel, it's 30%. In beauty, it's 20%. In food, it was 4%. Food is accelerating. Food will end up being 15 20%. So this world of what you're doing today, not only do you have to continue to do that through the summer, uh, is this a new world that we're all going to live in uh, for a long time, and it'll be in permanency. So I think these are things what Farid talked about. We have to just start building that product-wise and delivery mechanism-wise into our wiring of our business and our employees and how we think. The other thing I would say is right now, the most important person in a store is the person standing at that drive through right? Or the person going to the curb. You know, if they're looking tired and if they're frustrated, you've got no shot at repeat. If you see 
somebody wiping every time a customer leaves the drive through wiping literally with a sanitizer just wiping and they see that or someone's pulling up they see that that's a psyche that the, these guys are good and they're taking care of those customers so visual cue and how you do treat the customer and then just pushing for more web and online sales are just going to be the new new reality for many of our businesses c stores will be a little bit different but right now I think some people who've done C stores, they even started marketing, you know, at the pump as well as the door for big, you know, if they have fried chicken saying, hey, we have a 15 piece meal for $29.99 or whatever, right? And people are picking, they're moving five, 10, 20 a day. That's a big number in sales. So these are the types of things you want to get used to. And frankly, some of these things will stick and you never knew that this was an opportunity to sell a meal at dinner when somebody's leaving the factory and going home, they can pick up a 10, 15 piece tuck or a big a, a chicken meal or a taco plate, taco meal with, you know, different ingredients that they take home and make the taco. So these are just new ways of working today. So, so I'm glad you said that. And, and just to unpack this a little bit, right? Uh, what you're saying, what you're both saying is, is that in the next one to 12 months out, right given the times we are living in in, in the very short and, and perhaps the midterm but no more than 12 months out you do see this trend across different sectors in retail which is you know whether it's cell phone whether it's fast food or convenience stores the idea of curbside pickup being able to order and pick it up on the curbside or the idea of being able to order something and get it delivered to your home it is even more critical for the next zero to 12 months basically Right. Or you could say it's critical for zero to six to 12 months and maybe just a new way of working from zero to forever. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> so, 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 I mean, can you, you know, we, even on yesterday's conversation, there was a webinar by EPB. There, there was this, you know, there was some talk about pivoting, right? You uh, pivot karna chahiye, ye karna chahiye. I'm, I'm just a simple vepari, right? I mean, I'm, I know how to do run my dhanda, which is a retail dhanda, and I'm a C store owner. For example, uh, how should I be thinking about this pivot? So, when I'm running a store and cleaning my counter, and, and I understand that piece, right? How do I then transition in the next one to three to six months to start the delivery operations, to start more effectively the curbside pieces? What are the things I need to think about? Yeah, so I think that, um, you know, for, first what I would say is, is uh, let's, let, let me tackle that in twofold, right? Let me say uh, this, uh, let me pull back up and then I'll get into actual action. So if we look at, um, and then um, I do want to get to the back half of the year and beginning of 21 and what we can see there. But if we look at some permanency that was already, trends that were already happening and that will just get accelerated because of this crisis. It could have been happened in 09, it could have happened now, it would have happened five years from now. We weren't ready in 09, but the technology and, and companies exist today, right? So there are four or five major trends that are going on um, in retail. One, Farid covered online and delivery retailing. We already started talking about that. Second, brands and companies, more and more brands are selling directly online and businesses are selling directly online, they're no longer saying the wholesale channel is only my channel. In fact, most of our new businesses in our private equity firm, they sell direct to the customer first, then we sell to Ulta, and then we're selling somewhere else in some other channel if it's a beauty product, right? So this idea of omni-channel or selling in different places is happening across brands. The third is malls have been shrinking for a decade. 09 hurt us more. This, uh, this morning, looks like Neiman Marcus may go through a bankruptcy. Macy's has been closing 100 stores at a time. They're going to close 100, 200 stores again. J.C. Penney, I can't talk too much about that, but they may uh, file for bankruptcy potentially here. Um, so these major anchors in malls, but not only the anchors in malls, but also the small stores in malls are sending 20, 30, 40% sales online. All these uh, little boutique shops that you have in mall, national boutique, I won't say boutique, but these national chains that are 1,000, 3,000 square foot in malls. So mall trend is just changing, uh, and that's going to be impermanent. Um, Web-based businesses are growing, whether it's in product, 
education, health and wellness, or healthcare, those are growing. And, um, you know, these are some trends that aren't going to change. So now to your question, okay, what do I do if I am trying to do these things? The first thing is you focus on how can I sell to my existing customers more, you know, more things or extra things or bigger packages in the evening, et cetera. So most people don't focus on their existing customers. They say, I want to drive more traffic, more traffic, more traffic. Times like this, some companies have literally reduced the marketing and only, Rudy talked about this last night, only focused on selling to the existing customers because trying to market to new customers is too expensive. Uh, so focus on your existing customers. You find ways to build, uh, we'll talk, the TAs are talking about loyalty programs, that's gonna be needed. It's something that's super important over the next few years, but it's probably not for today. So I would focus on product sales, and then if you have contacts, you can ask and you can call me offline as, what do I do to start Uber Eats or another DoorDash or some relationship? They're pretty easy. You can go on, on their website and look, but if you need help, call us. Uh, there's many, or call the access line or call directly. There's simple ways to start some of those relationships as a single store owner, as a single fast food owner. Uh, you can do those things, so we can take that one offline. Farid, I don't know if you'd add anything else here. Yeah, what, what I would suggest uh, on this topic of using delivery platforms, I would recommend AT, uh, EPB to perhaps do a session on this. But this is going to be the new way of doing business. And, and a lot of Jamati member, members will benefit from it because no sense recreating the wheel. This is available. Chote chote business is current. Chote chote Chinese restaurants delivery So this is complicated. Just information is necessary. So EPB should consider a seminar or a webinar in you can bring in few people that have pivoted that way from a traditional business into, into kind of like what I mean called omni-channel. Okay, I would recommend that. Also, uh, I am more looking at some of the questions and, and a lot of people have questions about engaging with landlords and what have you. Uh, I'll be more than happy to talk to you one-on-one -on -one, uh, in next week or so. Uh, like a lot of people, I have a lot of time too. We're more than happy to do that. And uh, we, will, uh, we will share the number offline and then, and then you feel free to reach out to me via email or, or telephone and we can talk about it. One thing that I want to emphasize again and again, this is the time to start engaging the people who in the past, they will shoo me away. This is the post-COVID world. This is a different world. Renegotiate all the things that you need to renegotiate. While you're doing this on what I call the cost side of the aisle, but on the revenue side of the aisle, focus on digital, focus on your team members, focus on store safety and security, focus on running your business, and most importantly, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Take care of your 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 what I call community. I think that's as important as anything else as we go through this to fun. No, so this is very good. Thank you, thank you, uh, Meen and Farid. Uh, th these are very sound points, and, and and we've taken notes, by the way. So just to clarify a couple of things, uh, if uh, Farid, thanks for making yourself available to speak with people who who need help. Uh, if anyone does have questions, uh, please uh, send an email out to support at smileychamber.org. Uh, that's support at smileychamber.org with your contact details uh, and some details about your business and what you're looking for. And what we will do is uh, we'll coordinate uh, with EPB and the Access guys and, and with Farid as well. So thank you very much for that. Uh, another housekeeping item, Farid talked about uh, there being... Uh, an alliance or an association for jewelry retailers as well. Uh, that is a thing, that's something that EPB has helped organize. 
and you should keep an eye out because I believe they are planning uh, a webinar specific to the jewelry industry as well. So that would be very helpful. Uh, and the point about the delivery services, how we should probably do a webinar and kind of organize around those ideas, uh, well taken. So, uh, and by the way, one more thing, I'm seeing a lot of questions come in about SBA and EID, EIDL and payroll loans, et cetera. Those are specific technical questions, uh, many of which we have answered a couple of times in our previous webinars. Uh, however, there is a lot of information available for you on the Smiley Chamber website at smileychamber.org. Uh, and more importantly, uh, if you still have questions, please don't be shy about calling out the Access Helpline. The whole idea behind the, the Jamaati volunteers and specialists and CPAs and accountants and all of them serving as volunteers behind the Access Helpline is to support you. So if you have any questions, need guidance, etc., please do reach out to, to that. Now, I know we have kind of spent a lot of time talking about what should we do now? What should we do in the next three months, six months, nine months, etc. Let's switch gears a little bit. And, and I do want eventually we'll close out again talking about the impacts and the ideas for uh, not just our small business owners in different sectors, but also employees and individuals, right? What sh does it mean for them? How should they be thinking about it, etc. Uh, Likin, before we go there, uh, you know, Farid, let me ask you this. Uh, you and Amin have both successfully navigated through the previous recession, big recession in 2008 and 9. Yep. How, Farid, how are customers you feel behaving differently in the coming few months compared to the 2008 cycle? It's, Rahil, it's a very, very good question. Uh, I believe the biggest difference, in my opinion, is the shock. The shock of COVID shutdown, where the whole economy effectively shut down. And it happened in a very, on a very fast clip. It, it, like within two to three weeks, we went from lowest unemployment, economy growing, stock market, setting records, you can't find people to work in your store. In three weeks, you have 20 million people filing for unemployment. That shock, I think, has really impacted people's psyche, which was very different. In 2008, 2009, I remember things started bubbling up in New York on Wall Street and, and, and the housing bubble, it took a long time. It was a major, major, what I would call disruption, but it was limited to what I call financial services and, 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 and housing. It, was, it didn't affect me if I had a convenience store on Maine and Maine. It didn't affect me that much. I think this one is affecting everyone. If you are a doctor, it's affecting you. If you, are, if you are a Domino's pizza delivery guy, this is affecting you. There is just absolutely no one is immune to this, uh, this COVID disease. And I think that's the main difference. That's the main difference. 2008, 2009, started in Wall Street, New York, slowly worked throughout the nation had major impact, major disruption, but it took over a long period of time. We had time to adjust. We had time to plan psychologically and, and the knowledge. And plus, the information overload wasn't there. Today, you have social media, you have WhatsApp, you have all this crazy stuff, news cycle, 24 hours. People are spreading bad information everywhere. It is having an impact on people's psyche, which I believe it's very bad if you are watching CNN 24-7 and reading every WhatsApp post that's coming your way. So I think that's the major difference and how people react to it is probably exaggerated, in my opinion, a lot more than it, than it could have been. I mean? So, yeah, so Rahil, let me add, 
let, let me just quickly add here, right? So the question then becomes is, okay, everybody reads the same thing on the headlines. Everybody sees the same thing on the news. So I'm focused on retail right now, right? So what do I do? Furry talked about this is focus on the controllables. And there's a couple of things you can kind of focus on. So we know over the, uh, when I say a couple of things, meaning in understanding and getting facts. To me, the, the you know, I always say is, is in, in God we trust and everybody else bring data, right? So um, in that mindset is, you know, there are two things I would add is there's great uncertainty that's going to last for the rest of the year, maybe even to 21. And you say, what, what uncertainty are you talking about? So let me just give examples. We know COVID could come back. That's an uncertainty. We know the stock market's fluctuating. So that's an uncertainty. We know the election's coming up. That's going to get muddy and ugly. We're going to see a fist fight in this election uh, when this comes around. We're seeing unemployment news out there. So the question I always ask ourselves is, I'm now thinking about the customer. So what's gonna matter from a customer standpoint and what are the data points to look for? And I think I would urge everybody on this webinar to follow two key data points. And you can Google this and pull it up anytime. The first one is, what's the unemployment that's happening in the country and that's happening in your state? And sometimes there's city level information, but in your state, so you can see what the consumer pocketbook actually is, one, and what that means. And as that number goes from you know, six, 15, 17, 18% back towards 10 and down, that's a good thing. Then it's what the psyche is what Fareed talked about. How do I check the psyche of the customer? It just happens to be the University of Michigan, but if you type Michigan consumer sentiment on Google, you will see a track of a chart that actually tells you on a week by week basis what the customer psyche is. And you can actually pull up their details on their report. I think every Jamaati member or business owner, small, medium, large, when you're inundated with news, check these two facts from a consumer perspective. I always look at them because it tells me what's going to come. Is it getting better or is it gonna get worse? Um, and then the only other piece I would add for those in Texas We've gone from the last time, you asked the question, the last election to this time, we went from 6 million barrels of oil production in this country to 12 and a half billion, sorry, 6 and a half million barrels a day production to 12 and a half million barrels a day production. And at current oil prices, that could get impacted. And what is that going to do to the Texas economy? That's something that we'll, we'll have to watch closely and and make sure we understand. Um, so it's, it's pretty different than the last time around, but I think there's ways to get facts to keep monitoring this. Okay, so, so before I move on to the next segment, a couple of things. One, uh, we have, we've already gone past the hour mark. I will ask for everyone's permission to go for another maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes or so, so we can get through some of the questions that have come through. Uh, and Farid and Amin, I hope you guys are okay with that as well. Uh, secondly, there are still a few questions, again, continuing about the PPP program. There are a couple of questions I'm seeing about saying, if we want to negotiate with our uh, landlords, are there template of form letters, etc.? Uh, and, and there are questions like that. Um, once again, EPB has a full team of volunteers uh, waiting to help you and are helping Jamaati members. Uh, all you have to do is is reach out to them via access and, and they have these form documents. They have this research done and they should be able to guide you and handhold you. So please, uh, just call the access line. Uh, you know, number will give it back to you at the end of this uh, webinar. So you have it, uh, but be sure to call access uh, as you have those questions. There are some questions about how do we... Uh, um, you know, connect with Farid or Amin for follow-up questions. What we'll do is we'll, we'll make sure we collate all the questions that are there that are not answered and then, you know, uh, and try and get them answered hopefully in, in the coming webinar. And in some cases also forward your questions and contact details to these guys, yeah? Uh, okay, so with that, um, let's kind of let's kind of we we've talked about a lot of different things today right we have talked about a lot of different industries uh, we've talked about uh, the current situation the immediate future the near future you know 3 to 12 months etc if you had to 
so, so there's a lot of information out there today. If you, each one of you, and I'll, I'll kind of go industry by industry or sector by sector, if each one of you had to pick two or three or four issues that you specifically want people in different retail segments to remember and walk away with. So as they leave this webinar, these, each segment, these are the two or three key things you should remember in your segment, right? And this is the advice coming from Amin and Farid as business people. So first, let's start with a C-store and food service organization. So let's break that up in two. Uh, Amin, uh, can you talk about two or three key insights for the C-store space and then two or three key insights for the food service space? Yeah, so um, for the C-store space, what I would say is, um, and this, is, this may not be true for everybody, but um, if you are um, fortunate and in a situation where you found yourself better off in the last month, because of COVID, because of gas margins and inside volumes are up 5, 10, 20 percent. Highway locations are different. Neighborhoods are doing better than highway locations and industrial area locations where people are not working. So I understand that. As we go through the summer, um, understand the unemployment in your state and understand if unemployment, I think, is going to stay 8 to 10 percent personally and not go below 8 to 10 percent for the rest of the year, I think. If it happens, uh, mashallah, and we're in a good situation, but I would say the key that I would advise is the following. Know your number. Point number one is know your number. What does that mean? Calculate. Before COVID, I was making you know, $3,000 from fuel profit, and I was making $7,000 inside, and I was making $10,000 in my store. If you own that store, and if you didn't own, if you own that store in 2009-10, what happened then? Did that $10,000 go to $8,000, $7,000? What happened when unemployment stayed up? What happened from a safety and security perspective? Did you feel or threatened? Did you have threats at the counter? Were people stealing more from your store? Remember that, right? So for C-store people, I would say in the case, I would plan for that means conserve cash. So one is know your number. Second, because it may come and stay longer, conserve cash. And if you don't know, I like running a simple analysis that I have in my spreadsheet for all of my businesses. For seat store, I would say the following. What if the gas bet went to normal margin, 10 cents, like it was before, before the oil price collapse, right? Normal margin, 10, 12 cents, whatever you were in your business. And what if you're doing 80% of the gas volume and 70 or 80% of the inside volume? What is your profit change? Is it go from 10 to 5,000, 10 to 6,000? And are you able to make your payment, right? Your mortgage payment, your uh, credit union payment, your personal uh, loan payment from a friend or family? Um, are you able to make those payments and what situation does that put you in? Be prepared for that and then just hoard all the cash, meaning just save all the cash you can ahead of time is, is what I would say for C-store owners. Um, from a knowing perspective, because it'll make you feel better that it's coming. Uh, and then the, from a fast food perspective, I would say is, is we all reacted fast. We all reduced hours of employees immediately from some of our businesses went from 1,500 per week to 400 per week or 200 per week immediately like that within four days, you know, um, in terms of hours for the total employees for a store, right? It went fast. Uh, we should have taken better care of their employees. You're going to have to rehire those employees. I think fast food and fast, fast casual, as your state opens up, the business is going to come back. So if you've cut hours, if you've not talked to those employees for a while, find out what's happening to them. How are you going to get them back if you're in the fast food business? Or you're going to have to hire again. Be prepared for that because it may come like a wave from talking to some people who service McDonald's and uh, Chick or Chick Fil A is not a franchise, but um, you know Popeyes and others. In the last week or so, I've been on the phone with a lot of franchisees, and they're expecting an in increase in volume towards 100 in the next four to six weeks in non-northeast states. Northeast will take longer, so they're expecting sort of the volume to build. So how are you going to hire people back? How are you going to service the customer? Who's your front to the customer? How are they keeping sanitation top of mind? That's super important. So for those owners, I would say keep that in mind because it's coming at you in the next two, three months. Um, and 
Um, I, let me pass it on to Farid, and if I miss something, I'll, I'll come back with it. Farid, uh, let me kick it to you for other areas. Yes, so uh, thank you, Amin. I, Rahil, the question you asked, what are the three things that we should keep in mind looking ahead, right? Yeah. So, so I'll speak more, uh, more so in a overall retail generalities and a little bit of what I like to call, um, you know, a bit of common sense as well. So first and, first and foremost, I would say the number one thing, focus on facts and not on media hyperboles. Focus on facts. I'll say it again, science will solve the virus problem. Economy will open up, perhaps a bit slowly in certain regions. Stimula checks are coming. They arrived, 80 million individuals were sent payment last week. The stimulus money is here and people will spend. They will spend. Government support is for real. PPP loans are here. Take advantage of it. It's here. And government, in my opinion, has acted much quicker this time around than they did in 2008 and 2009. And I think all of us can agree with it. And last, but probably most important, is for us to band together. There is strength in numbers and misery loves company. So let's get together, let's talk, let's support each other. And I think, I believe, we'll get through this in a very, uh, what I call strong, um, in a, a much stronger position on the other side. So again, I repeat, focus on facts. My second thing, uh, for, which is more retail specific, is to accept that the retail will shrink. Overall retail, traditional retail will shrink. It's unavoidable. So accept that. Digital impact is here to stay. It will accelerate and will take dollars away from your business unless you can find a way to pivot. I believe that is a fact. And you're gonna have, you're gonna be in a situation, certain facilities, malls, areas may open late, may never open, things like that. So that's here to stay. Accept that. And third, finally, is the fear of unknown. We as 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 community, as one Jamaat, have to have to confront what I call fear. Because there's a lot of unknowns out there. We don't know if there is a second wave coming. We don't know when the vaccine is gonna come. We don't know when the therapy is gonna come. But we do know one thing that we have a business to run. So focus on what you can control and not worry about things that simply add anxiety and stress to your life and to your family. Aapko thoda ye cheez mein bolte na ke go with the flow hona hoega. Not worry about every little aspect, every little news bite. And I I cannot overemphasize that enough. I would say furtherly in the same topic. Take care of your folks, take care of your employees, talk to them, engage with them, engage with your landlord, engage with your banker, talk to them, be transparent. There is no shame in asking for help. It will make you stronger. It'll give you confidence. Aapko confidence milega ke mein bank se baat kar sakta hoon, meri taklif ka, mein meri family se baat kar sakta hoon, mein meri community se baat kar sakta hoon. There is no shame. Every, we are all, hum sab ek boat man. There is no difference. And if you're gonna squeeze somebody, squeeze your landlord, squeeze your vendor. Don't squeeze your employee. Because wo bichara paycheck to paycheck rehta hai. Uske paas safety net nahi hai. Landlord bank se baat kar sakta hai, uske paas options hai. Aapke employee ke paas options kam hai. So uska khayal rukho, uski family ka khayal rukho. Very important. And finally, take care of your health, 
your family, your spiritual life, and what I would call your your whole person. That would be my last piece. So, Rahel, um, yeah. let me let me add one one more thing is this yeah. especially for those in in uh, who own to everything Fareed said I agree with and and I'll add sort of two more things uh, which are connected is is one if you have a little bit of time this is a time of reflecting and teaching right so for those who of you are fortunate enough to be in multiple businesses. You have your own business, you have five, 10 stores, you're in a business group or partnership group, you have other businesses. Whether you have one business or multiple businesses, reflect on two things is, one is, is ask yourself, is, are your, is your business or are your businesses, where do they stand, how cyclical are they? This is a time to reflect and ask ourselves is, how cyclical is my business? Meaning not at all, like a grocery store, somewhat cyclical, like a salon, COVID obviously it shut down, but, or highly cyclical, like maybe hotels or full service hotels, right? So how cyclical is your business and how much leverage do you have on your business or did you put on your business? Would, how would you do it if you had to do it again? As a personal story coming out of 2009, I had too much leverage and not enough cash reserves skied through it okay fine but this time not a single one of our businesses was over levered or had did have reserves sitting there right so we learned so learn from this time around and then the second piece is is a time to teach for those of you who are fortunate to have your kids working in your business or have college kids who are mature and and are i sat down with my son last week and we reviewed every one of our family businesses and said what should we be doing differently for the next 10 years are we too cyclical? Are we not cyclical enough? Do we not have enough investments here? Too much here? What does this look like? So use this also, it literally only takes two hours. I did red, yellow, and green on two. Is it cyclical business? Is it, is it leveraged? If you run down every single one of your businesses, if you're in a situation where you have multiple, where do you stand on those two fronts? And you're gonna learn a lot. It's a very cathartic exercise, I call it. It's a very interesting exercise to go through to learn from, uh, but don't don't let this situation go to waste from a learning perspective is, is something I wanted to add. I know it's very busy times, but if you don't take an hour or two to do it now, you'll never do it again. Thanks, and, and I will come back around and, and uh, ask each one of you for your absolute last parting thoughts before we end. But but Fareed, the, I wanted to touch base on something you said, you, you talked a lot about employee engagement and taking care of uh, your employees. And I mean, you spoke about it from, you know, an individual standpoint as well, right? Take a step back, reflect, you know, tell me if I'm a professional, uh, so we've talked to the business owners in the Jamaat, but if I'm a professional listening in, or if I'm a wage earner, right? Uh, what are your thoughts for me specifically that, that are applicable to me? Fareed? Well, you know, uh, Zarurat invention Kimaya, Apne Sunalga, right? So start a business. This the best entrepreneurs start at the time of crisis. So I would say, if you can jump in at first, that's it's the best way best way to earn a living and and leave a, and 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 do something exciting. Uh, the entrepreneurs, if you can afford it, you have the education, you have the know-how and the passion, and you can be scrappy and you can be what I would call a uh, uh, wanted adventure. Perhaps you should start a business, find a need, look for all the new industries that are coming up. I mean, obviously the digital world is blowing up. So many different aspects have uh, uh, this, this, I mean, think about, think about all the, home-based businesses, the, the Zooms of the world, the, the, the learning apps, and there's, there's just unlimited what could happen. So my advice to, to professionals would be to, to seriously look at this and, and perhaps, you know, be the next success story in our Jamaat. Thank you. I mean, what about you uh, for both the professionals and wage earners in the Jamaat? Yeah, um, you know, I think for the wage earners, um, before we talk about the uh, professional, oh, let me talk, touch on both. For the wage earners, 
you know, for some of people who are looking to do something different or, you know, there's a lot of big online companies and delivery companies that are coming out of this, like Amazon warehouses and Amazon delivery locally, web-based businesses. And for wage earners, so those of you who are listening, if a family member is looking to do something different, um, you know, the Amazons of the world are paying 15, 17, 20 dollars an hour plus benefits. Uh, and you're working in a pretty safe environment. So historically, we used to think about, oh, well, you know, we have to go to a manufacturing plant and we have to uh, work at a plant that doesn't make sense. But people who are moving into some of these businesses are web based or technology and uh, delivery-based businesses are making a good money and they're getting promoted. The ones who are getting promoted are now making 60, 80, $100,000 a year or more, and they speak okay English. They're not perfect in, in English at times. So things are opening up. So look at where the trends are for the wage earners and, and look into these. I think EPB called the helpline. They actually have access to uh, in both all of our major states into these companies. Uh, they actually have access into these companies to get a job there for the wage earners. Um, and then for the professionals is, you know, this is the time for resilience and grit. I would say coming out of this, 